Hey everyone, Judge Jack here for the much anticipated, very exciting first episode of a series, How to Play DCC, or How to Judge or Run DM, GM, your first zero level funnel. Zero level funnel, yes, in DCC Dungeon Crawl Classic by Goodland Games, you can find it on goodlandgames.com or at your local game store, is a unique version of Dungeons and Dragons where you start with four zero level characters as opposed to building a first level character. That comes into play with tons of fun later on and we're gonna jump right in. The main goal of this experience is to have fun uh, and to inspire creativity within yourself and within your friend group uh, to go on a journey and an adventure that you could never have imagined uh, without the collective imagination of your friends. What is DCC? DCC is a role-playing game in OSR or old school replica made by the company Goodman Games created by Joseph Goodman. There are a lot of things about it that are sort of new and a lot of things about it that are taken from older ideas of D&D and the beginnings of it with the uh, Gygaxian uh, sort of lineage being uh, heavily influenced in the creators of this game. Uh, I, by the way, do not own any of these, uh, and I, all of the things that I use are property of Goodman Games, or I have purchased uh, for myself via the Goodman Games website or other game stores near my local house. So DCC is a role-playing game. It's based on uh, an old school style of play where your race is your class, uh, and we'll get into that a little later, and you, there's very high character death. Uh, the leveling system is different. You only go from 1 to 10, but the levels are sort of beefed up in a way um, there aren't as many mechanics or specific feats that you would find like you would in a game like pathfinder or even 5e uh, it has a much more open uh, exploratory creative imaginative feel that uh, will demand a lot of you on the spot in game itself which is a lot of fun and presents a lot of uh, wonderful opportunities for role play and uh, even uh, better yet letting the die uh, tell the story along with really good role play. What do you need to get started? Well, I've never judged before, I've never DM before, I've never played before, or maybe you have done all of those things a bunch of times and you're just interested in a different system like I was. Here's what you do. First step, get your hands on a copy of the Goodman Games Dungeon Crawl Classic Role Playing Game Core Rulebook. You can do it, uh, again, via the Goodman Game website. You can buy a PDF of it, or you can go to your local game store and pick up a hard copy of it. I have both. I actually have multiple copies of the same Core Rulebook because they have alternating art and different anniversary edition things that are really cool if you're a collector like that. And so grab a copy of the Core Rules. From there, you have pretty much everything you need. There are character sheets in there that you can photocopy or scan. There are adventures that get you started at the back of the book. Um, there's all the spells you need, all of the uh, bestiary, bestiary, uh, list of spells, list of equipment, all of that you'll find within this core rulebook itself. It's one of the best core rulebooks of any uh, system I know of, and it's very self-serving. You really only need this to start. I would also recommend uh, getting a set of uh, dice, polyhedral dice. Normally there are seven polyhedral die, a d4, a d6, a d8, two d10, one d12, and a d20. Uh, DCC makes use of uh, different funky dice that you'll see if you uh, scroll past all this amazing art that you will appreciate later. The dice chain is represented as follows, 1d3, 1d4, 1d5, 1d6, 7, 8, 10, two tens, 112, 14, 16, 20, 24, and D30. And all of those die will be used at some point, uh, which is great, depending on what class you play, obviously. The next thing you need to play DCC is two to eight people. Uh, I've played this game one-on-one -on -one with multiple characters, and it is a blast. Or you can play with eight people. If it's your first time, I would recommend two to four uh, players to your one judge. Uh, getting any higher than that can get a little dicey and there's a lot to keep track of and if you don't have a system that works for you yet and you're still trying to figure that out which i would imagine since this is your first time possibly running a game get two to four people uh other than yourself who are interested in playing and invite them to play a funnel ba -ba -da -da. the portal under the stars by joseph goodman himself uh and it's a great zero level funnel uh, if you don't want to go any further past that 
uh, past just buying the core rules in PDF form. And then the Infernal Crucible of Cesar Khan the Mad, uh, level 5 uh, adventure by Harley Stroh, another brilliant writer uh, and um, imagination and brain. And that is not going to follow a zero level adventure directly, but it is there for you. I think the, the core rulebook PDF is $5 on the Goodman Games website. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. And that's all you need. Uh, you don't even need to buy dice. You can use uh, Roll20 has their own die rolling feature. 1D20. Or you can... Oh, 19. I rolled a 20 earlier, but I was muted. Or slash roll 1D100. Or 1D1000. Uh, there are So you don't even need to buy your own dice. But if you want your own sets of die, uh, you can go to goodmangames.com or your local game store and grab your first set of... Uh, die or your hundredth set if you're anything like me we chose a different funnel to run boom look familiar that's because this is from sailors on the starless sea a classic zero level adventure also written by harley stroh that has provided me with some of the best role play moments of my life and some imaginative moments that i have just never seen before some of the most fun i've ever had around a table or online have come from this funnel and it never gets old every time i play it or run it it's different and it's fun and it's unique uh and so we have our funnel we have our friends we have our dice we have our core rules we have everything we need we have our roll 20 or our other uh a real tabletop in real life or some other platform that we want to use all of that is set the stage is set the only thing we need now is to roll our zero level characters whoa, 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 what zero level characters what yes that's right zero level characters we will not be making first level characters we will not be choosing feats we will not be min maxing there is no point by system this is as brutal as it gets and if you've played DD stick with me here because it's a little scary when you hear that rolling ability scores starts with 3d6 three cube sided die three not four dropping the lowest not five not point by not extra this extra that no re-rolled ones 3d6 it's page 18 of the core rulebook so we will take our 3d6 and we will roll them and it will land on something between 3 and 18 those are the windows uh, followed by a modifier that will modify that skill whether it be strength agility stamina personality intelligence or luck uh, dcc works a little differently than some of the other systems you may or may not have played or seen before these are going to be your six main attributes uh, you do not rearrange them in any order you roll 3d6 straight down the line four times in a row to come up with your zero level character here is your zero level sheet it is comprised of four mini character sheets that you will roll to fill out and then one of them or maybe two of them will become your first level character whoever survives the funnel the zero level funnel uh, from your mini party as a player will move on so boom 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 you have four different characters we want to go back here up to the character creation page and follow this step by step this is going to be on page 16 of the core rulebook you will roll those 3d6 six times you will fill those in strength agility stamina personality intelligence and luck in order then one of the things that I find most fun about DCC is, as a judge, especially if this is your first time running a game, there's no better way to get the group all on the same page than rolling your characters together. So I, as the judge, would say, everyone roll your ability scores, take 3d6, uh, and roll them straight down the line four times in a row uh, to fill out all four of your characters. That's how we would start. Then I would go to the next step determine zero level occupation and on here we'll have 100 different options for uh, these zero level characters occupations they're going to range from human to dwarf to elf to uh, halfling and your race in dcc will end up being your class we'll talk about that later on it's one of the osr components one of the old school replica components for now don't worry about it just take your percentage die which will be 2d10 and roll them and i'll have i'll tell everyone okay everyone 
grab your percentage die and roll them four times in a row and we got what did we get 89 so we would scroll down find 89 that is a squire with a long sword and a steel helmet not bad so then i would go and put squire in this slot and continue three more times to get all four of my zero level characters choose an alignment alignment in dcc is very simple you have lawful neutral and chaos it doesn't really matter until you are being healed by a cleric uh clerics of different alignment will heal different numbers for characters being healed by that so if you have the same alignment you'll get the max if you have one step difference it'll be a little less and if you're super on opposing ends like lawful and chaotic then it will be affected by that so that's pretty much the only thing to keep in mind when you're when you're doing that but forget about all that you'll learn as you go that's the fun part then you purchase equipment so we'll scroll all the way down to page 70. we are going to roll a 24 sided die to determine one piece of equipment for each of your four zero level characters so I will roll my D24, I will roll a five. That means that my squire would have a an empty chest worth two gold pieces. I would put that on my character sheet right here, uh, fill it in or write it out, however you wanna do it. And then you will be able to move on to the final steps of creating your zero level funnel party. Page 21. All zero level characters start with the following. 1d4 hit points modified by your stamina modifier. Uh, 5d12 copper pieces, one of the only times you get to roll d12s and it's fun. 0 XP, one randomly determined piece of equipment that comes from the d24 that we just rolled. One randomly determined occupation. Based on the occupation, the possession of one weapon and training and its use or the possession of some trade good. A zero modifier to all attack rolls, all saving throws. Note that zero level characters use a crit die of 1d4 on crit table one. That's something you'll get when you read through the core rule book. Different critical attacks land on different tables that you roll on to uh, decide the outcome. And that's going to be the case. A lot of DCC is based on tables and rolling on those tables to determine. And they become a ton of fun later on, especially when you can start to create your own tables and see all the different tables and you realize there's a history of tables in D&D &D and how far it goes back, actually. The last thing, I think I forgot to mention. What did I forget to mention? Hmm. Oh, you roll a 1d30 as well to determine each character's lucky auger or lucky star that they're born under. Uh, the luck ability in DCC acts as how lucky your character is in certain situations. Uh, and that comes into play in lots of fun different ways. So I will find my large D30, my 30 sided die, I'll roll it. And that means that I get to apply on 22, which is resisted temptation willpower save. So this means that my luck modifier for whatever character I just rolled this for will get will saving throws boosted by their luck modifier. Sometimes it's tricky, sometimes it's a negative modifier, which can be tough, but hey, that's the fun of DCC. You never know what you're going to get. Um, so, now that we have, together as a team, created all of our characters through a step-by-step -step process, if you will, uh, we should have anywhere from 12 to 16 to 20 zero level characters ready to go through the funnel. Then we will move over to our funnel, Sailors on the Starless Sea. And what I like to do, uh, it's taken me a long time. I'm quite messy and have a bit of a scattered brain. And so to help keep me organized, what I like to do is find my funnel, read it, get to know it, know it as well as you possibly can. Not don't, you know, obsess over it and sleep with it under your pillow unless you want to, which I'm sure would yield wonderful results because you'll be dreaming about it and your imagination and creativity will only be enhanced by uh, keeping it close to you. But keep it with you. Read it on the train or the bus or your commute or, you know, uh, read through it and make sure you just have an idea of how you want to run it. Be prepared, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Then scroll down and take any handouts. This is a handout. They'll always be at the beginning of the, of the module. Grab your, uh, your handouts. Set all your handouts off to the side that you're going to need later on. This way, it's easily accessible and you can draw the player's attention to it as soon as you need them, rather than pausing the game and having to go and look for it and, oh, well, I forgot to print this out or I forgot to do this. Just grab it, throw it here, um, and you'll see, I essentially, what we're doing is uh, a 
preparing for the entire funnel. I have everything I need, and some adventures are larger than this, granted. Some adventures you'll need multiple pages, but for this one, especially for funnels, I like to keep everything on the same page because it allows me to see everything I need laid out. So I have my handouts right here, over here. I have all three of my maps down here that we're gonna need that the players are going to explore, right? And then any art that you wanna show the players that inspires the, the adventure as well. And then finally, you wanna scroll down to the introduction in your module and read the premise, just the summary to yourself and remind yourself what the short, if I had to say this module in one sentence, what would it be? And as a judge, that should remind you, hey, here's the main theme of this. Before we get zoomed in on all the crazy things that everyone's gonna wanna do in this funnel, let's just zoom out and look at the larger picture. We're gonna try to get one of each of these players characters to level one and sometimes everyone will die you never know uh, how it's going to go uh, then after the introduction scroll down to the encounter table which is going to be the judge's best friend that's how i know that right here on my left i have every beast or uh, monster all of the characters that the players can choose from are up here and then all of the enemies that they're going to face are down here. If you can't find a token for it or something, go on uh, online, find a screenshot you like or a free piece of art and use it or just draw a little thing with some marker to get your point across. Anyway, it, however you're having fun, have fun. Uh, I like to use Roll20 has some great uh, things and so I just say, oh, I need two of these and I look for two of those. And I just set it all off to the side right here in this little area. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Roll20. The reason that this is brighter over here and that this is darker is because this is what they call fog of war. It's essentially like putting black pieces of paper over the over the game board so that the players can't see what's underneath. And we, as the judge, will reveal piece by piece the map. So right now, all they can see, all the players would be able to see, is this, the starting page. Then I'd move them up here and I'll, I would reveal some areas right up here and they could choose their character. Then... I can manipulate anything and everything underneath as we go and take them from map one over to map two, over to map three if necessary, and back again. So everything you're gonna need for the for the adventure is right in front of you. Uh, and, and I will make another Roll20 friendly sort of uh, video, but just to say Roll20 is a great place to start even if you have never done anything like this. So I lay everything out, know the adventure back and forth as best you can, grab your friends, grab your dice, get your pencils and your papers, make those zero level characters, start the funnel. And finally, to those first time judges out there or even judges from other systems like Pathfinder and D&D &D and 5e and Vampire and, and Call of Cthulhu and uh, Rifts and Starfinder and Starcrawl and Star Wars and Trek and everything out there, be open and have fun. Be open to being surprised by your players. Be open to letting them tell the story. Uh, be open to guiding and being guided at the same time. Be open to rule changes, exceptions, loopholes. Uh, you know, after all, you are a judge. Let your players be lawyers. Let your players make a good case. If they make a good case, rule in their favor or decide to crush them underneath your hammer of justice. The, the most important thing is have fun. Good luck. Have fun. I will answer any and all questions in the comment section if you're having trouble starting your game. There are so many ways to do this. Uh, this is just the way I do it. Some people might organize their things very differently. I find that this works best for my brain. So if you have any suggestions or tips, please let me know. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and more of this will come. We're gonna go through all of the classes. We're gonna go through uh, combat and equipment and making your own magical items and creating magical enemies and beasts and dragons and uh, running your own homebrew creations and, and creating your own world outside of modules and converting modules from other systems into DCC. And we'll find how adaptive this, this wonderful, wonderful game is. And um, I hope it brings as much joy to you and your friends as it's brought me and my friends. And I know I can just think now of all the times we've been laughing and cracking each other up uh, in this imaginary world and then also crushed by a character that you never thought you would play because you 
didn't have a chance to min-max him at first level and set up this plan for how your character was going to rise through the ranks and become this incredible godlike creature. You were given a beekeeper with a jar of honey who became a wizard and became, against all odds, the greatest hero the world has ever heard of. And I, <laughs> and losing those characters and having to deal with that and moving on, it, it is such a pure experience. And I hope I can be here for every step of the way for you all. And please let me know if you have any questions or concerns and I'll see you on the next one.